Have you ever wanted to add overlay animations, hand-drawn illustrations, or even custom 2D characters to your videos? Hey, come on, that's rude. Okay, admittedly that was a little over the top, but in this tutorial you'll learn how to make 2D animations like what you just saw and then add them to your live action videos for free using Keynote and iMovie for Mac. Sound good? Then stick around. Now, as you can see just from my intro, there are all kinds of different animations you can add to your videos. But for the sake of time, this tutorial will focus on how to create hand-drawn style animations and we'll be using, again, Keynote and iMovie for Mac. These are free applications if you have a Mac and if you don't have a Mac, uh, sorry. I might make a tutorial like this for PC users in the future, so if you'd be interested in that, please leave a comment below to let me know. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Here's what we'll be creating in this tutorial. Okay, so to get started, we need three things. First, a new Keynote project, a new iMovie project, and then the video that we wanna add animations to. So here we have Keynote, and I'm just gonna choose the basic white template or theme here. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because we're gonna be deleting any of the presets that are in there. For my video, I found this breakdancing video on a stock, a free stock video site, and I'll actually leave a link in case that's something you'd be interested in learning more about. But I chose this breakdancing video because uh, number one, you don't want to see me dancing, trust me. And number two, these dynamic movements are going to look really good with the type of animation we're going to create. So uh, now that we have that, we want to go back into Keynote and then under Document, we want to make sure that our Keynote project is set up to the correct resolution for this video. So my video's resolution is 1920 by 1080, so it's 1080p. So uh, I'm going to go down under Slide Size. And where it says widescreen, I'm gonna select a custom slide size. And then we can see this is actually already 1920 by 1080, but uh, obviously this is where we would change that if for some reason it were a different resolution or my video were a different resolution, I would change that here. Now, another very important tip here is under presentation type. Under normal, we're gonna say self-playing and we're gonna delete the delay or set the delay to zero for both transitions and builds. And this will allow us to have smooth animations without any unexpected delays. It's a pretty important setting here. Now, once we've done that, we can delete everything already on the slide and then simply drag our breakdance video in here. So now we've got this video and if you hit play, you can actually see you can, you can preview it here in Keynote, but we're not really going to use that feature. What's actually going to be very helpful is that under format, once we have the video selected, we go to movie and then poster frame. Now this isn't what this, this particular setting is for, but it's very useful for scrubbing through the video and finding where, uh, for our particular uses here, we're looking for when the dancer's feet hit the ground and we're going to create some impact animation around that. So for example, if we scrub through to about the 0.3 seconds here, it's like 0.3 is where it first hits. Uh, we can see is that his, his right foot there is hitting the ground. So we're gonna create an animation around that. So to do that, we're gonna go up here. And by the way, my toolbar probably looks different than yours. And that's because I customized it to make Keynote a little easier and a little faster uh, in terms of creating animated videos. So if you ever want to customize your toolbar, you just right click and select customize toolbar and then here are all the options. So obviously there's a lot of stuff you can use here. So next we're gonna to go to shape and select the pen tool. And we're just gonna draw a straight line. And so uh, once you've drawn the line, you can obviously see there's still kind of a, an attachment here. You can hit escape to get out of there. And now we just have a pretty basic line, not too exciting, but under strokes so around format style and then stroke, we're going to change it to this kind of uh, hand drawn looking texture. And there we go. Now, obviously this black's a little boring here. So let's add, let's make it blue. And what we're going to do now is copy paste. So command C, command V, and we're just going to kind of go around here and create little impact like, you know, like almost like the impact is radiating out from where his feet hit. 
So next what we want to do is select all of these illustration points. And an easy way to do that is with the object list setting here. And you may not have this again on your toolbar. Um, so you can add it. I believe you can also go to view and show object list. So you should have this view panel at least. So you can select all of these lines and then under the animate tab, we're gonna add an effect, add a built-in effect, and we're gonna use the line draw effect. So as you can see, they currently are going the opposite way that we would like. So under direction, we're gonna to change to end to start. And acceleration usually creates kind of a smooth animation that kind of starts slower and ends slower, but we don't really need that for this particular purpose. So we can change acceleration to none. And then we want this to be nice and punchy and fast. So let's change the duration to, let's try 0.1 seconds and preview that. Now it's not really ideal that they're all happening at different times. So to change that, we're gonna go under build order down in the bottom right here. And let's select the bottom five lines and we will say we want it to start with the previous build. Now for this first line, we're gonna tell it to start with build one, but we want there to be a slight delay because remember the dancer's foot doesn't hit until right around the 0.3 seconds. So let's try 0.3 seconds. It's a little too soon, so let's try 8 second, 0.8 seconds. That looks pretty good. But then you'll notice the lines stay on there and we want them to actually come back off as well. So select all these animations and then back under the animate tab under build out, we're gonna add another effect. And this, we're gonna use the dry line draw again. And again, we have to change the direction and change the timing and remove the acceleration. And then once again, we want to make this the bottom five lines trigger with the previous build and then this one we want to trigger after the build and we want to make sure the delay is zero so that it, it they, they draw in and draw back out very quickly. So here's what that looks like. Okay, looks pretty good. So now we'll go back to the video here and fast forward a little more and we see that his left foot now hits around maybe one and a half seconds or so. And now that we've created this first set of lines, we can actually just copy these so command C, command V to paste, and just move them over to that new foot. And just keep things interesting. Let's change the color to green. And starting with 14 here, the animation 14, that's where the, these lines first start animating on. You wanna make sure this is set to after build 13. And it currently has a 0.8 second delay. Let's see what that looks like. It's pretty good. I think we can make it a little shorter. Let's try 0.7. Cool. So hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of this. Click the video. Under poster frame, we're gonna fast forward a little more. We can see that the dancer's leg kind of swings forward. So let's add a new type of animation to kind of give that movement a little extra oomph. So what I'm gonna do is just grab one of these lines, copy and paste. And now if you double click this line, you'll see that when you hover, there is a little circle in the middle. And what the circle allows you to do is create a curve. So if you click and drag, it creates a curve. You can also double click it to convert it to an angle. But for our purposes, we're gonna keep it as a curve. And what we're gonna do here is just create almost like a wind-like effect, um, a sweeping effect from this line to carry through with his leg to give it kind of that extra impact. Let's make this red and we'll do one more. And you can grab these points. Again, I double click to, to enter the editing mode. You can, you can move these points around just to get a look that you want. And it looks like, so this one triggers on and then triggers off. And then this one triggers on and triggers off, which is not what we want. We want them to both trigger on at the same time. So let's grab the animation from 28 and drag it up here. And we'll say that should start with build 20. And then these are obviously starting after, but we wanna make sure these build together as well. Now, I'm thinking, let's see, let's preview this. Okay, obviously that's too fast to begin with, so let's try 0 0.6. That was pretty good. Um, I think we might be able to get away with 0.5, but I think this one actually might look a little cooler if we go back to the animation and we change the duration to 
point two. It's gonna be a little slower, but I think it should look good here. Let's see. Yeah, that seems a little more natural. It feels it feels better. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go back to the video format, poster frame. So his leg swings forward, and then this foot hits, and then that foot hits. So let's get this foot here. Again, we can just go in here, copy, paste, move these over, and let's change it to yellow. Side advice here, obviously this is getting kind of confusing. You can actually make all these animations on separate slides if that's easier. Um, I prefer for this particular project, at least I'm, I, I like it better all on one slide, but um, just know that if it's getting too confusing for you, you can actually create another slide and separate them out that way. But let's see what this is looking like. Okay, that's firing a little early. So let's add, let's try one second. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I think I wanna move these lines over just a little bit. And then his foot hits again. If we fast forward a little more, his right foot hits there. So let's create lines for that. See what I mean? It gets a little, little muddy here. Let's change this to blue and let's have a look. So obviously this is all just kind of trial and error. You're just playing with the timing here and we can, we'll be able to further adjust timing in iMovie, but uh, you know, obviously it helps to get it as precise as possible within Keynote. So after that, let's see what the dance move, what dance move comes next. Then he swings this leg up. It's like this cool windmill effect. I think that's what the kids call it these days, right? Totally kidding. We're gonna just recreate this swinging effect. And so again, double click, and then we can swing this up. Swing this one down. I'm gonna do the same for this guy. So we wanna make sure this triggers after the previous builds. Let's have a look. Cool, that looks great. We're gonna stop the impact animations there. And uh, from there, we're gonna create a hand-drawn text animation. So you could actually just animate text on this, on top of the screen here, and that's totally fine. Since we have these kind of hand-drawn animations though, I think it's cool, it'd be cool to kind of create a stop motion like effect with the text that makes it look, you know, kind of organic and, and hand-drawn. So to do that, we need to create, um, we can just duplicate this slide. So uh, command D and then let's delete all the lines except one of them and let's go in here and make sure that we we remove the animation so let's go to build order just remove all these animations then we're gonna oh. then we're gonna take this line and let's let's make it bigger so now we're gonna draw out the word dance. And to do that, we'll just double click in here and create a, more point, a few more points. Again, you double click to create a sharp angle. Okay, so now we have our word dance and we can just make sure that's centered. Now, uh, now we've got this kind of overlaid, we really don't need this video on the back, so we can just delete that. Now we wanna go to make sure that nothing is selected under format, under background, color fill, we wanna make sure it says no fill. And this is gonna allow us to export 
to a transparent background, which is very important when we're overlaying these animations on top of a video. Now to create an organic uh, stop motion like effect with this text, we're going to copy and paste or just duplicate this slide. So select the slide, command D. And we're gonna go back in here and just subtly move a few things around. Really subtle, it doesn't have to be, if it's, if it's too much, it'd be kind of jarring. So we don't want it to be too much. It's just kind of little, little changes here and there. And this is just going to allow us to show a little bit of movement rather than just a static word. And once you do that, we'll repeat. So Command D. And once again, just make some a few subtle changes here. And there's really no right or wrong here. Um, it's again just kind of personal preference. But basically, what's going to happen is when this plays through, it'll look like this. Just kind of subtle movements, and. What we want to do next is just copy and paste these or duplicate them. And so now we have this. Just kind of a repeat. And we can do that one more time. So now when it goes through, it looks like this. Pretty cool. But now, uh, importantly, we need to select all of these. And under Animate, where it says start transition, we wanna say automatically, and let's make it change at 0.25 seconds. And this is gonna make sure that the animations are actually visible, otherwise it would kinda of blow through all of them really fast and you wouldn't even see any of the animation movement. Sometimes when you preview animations in the animation panel, the animations aren't actually timed accurately. And you it, to really get a, a better idea of what the time is gonna be like, you can go up here to the play button and play through the animation. So let's do that now. And there you have it. So to export this, first we need to get this first slide ready. So we're going to delete the background and then under format, color fill, we wanna make sure it says no fill. Then the next step is just to export it. So we'll go to file, export to movie. And I'm gonna export these two separate animations so the, the impact animations and the dance animations, I'm gonna export those separately. So to do that, under slides, we'll select from one to one. And then under resolution, this part's important. We wanna change this to custom. Now first we wanna make sure that the resolution is actually right. So we'll change that to 1920 by 1080. And then the important part here is compression type. We wanna select Apple ProRes 4444, this last option. Because when we select this, we're able to export with a transparent background, which again is kind of the whole point of this. So now we'll say next. And we could save this as impact. Okay, so now we can export the dance animation. So export to movie, custom. Oh, let's go back here. Change this to 2 to 13, so we can leave out the impact animations. Change the compression type, next, and dance. Okay, so that's all we have to do in Keynote. So now we can just minimize that, and you wanna pull up your iMovie project. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to quickly let you know that if you're enjoying this tutorial, you'll probably really like my comprehensive course on creating animated videos with Keynote. In the course, we cover how to create entire explainer videos, graphic overlays, and so much more. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, back to the tutorial. Now, when you start iMovie, you'll either see this screen, or if you have a bunch of projects, you'll see a bunch of projects here, but we're just gonna create a new video, a new movie. If you've never really used iMovie and you're not that familiar, uh, I guess now's your chance to get familiar. Uh, so basically it's pretty user-friendly, pretty simple to use. To get videos in your library, you just can select them and drag them in. You can also select that import media button that's easier for you. And now we're just gonna drag our dance video to the main timeline and we're gonna drag our animations on top of it. And we can hit space to play it or we can press the play button. So it looks like the timing is a little off. Maybe we need to cut the front part of it off here. Okay, so it looks like it starts good, but then it's, it's actually running a little fast, which is interesting.
what we can do is highlight the animation and we're going to go up here to the speedometer and under speed change it to custom and now we can change this to 90 percent and let's see so this basically just slows the animations down just a little bit so maybe we need to start this so by the way what i'm doing here should have explained if you grab the side of any kind of clip and drag then it essentially trims that video so we're just shortening that video the front part of it so obviously you can endlessly tweak this um, you could even split clips so like so like this one looks good that one looks pretty good let's say one of them was not accurate then you could find a space between the two animations and highlight that and then press command B and that splits the clip. And then you could actually slow this clip down more or speed it up or whatever you need to do. Um, just kind of quick editing tip there for you. I'm gonna undo that because it actually looks pretty good. And then we wanna add the dance animation on top of our video. So let's see what this looks like all together. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks pretty good. Um, but I, I wanna show you one more helpful feature. So say that we didn't want dance to take up the entire space here. What we can do is select it. And then in this first setting here, these kind of two boxes, it's video overlay settings. I'm gonna select that. And you can see that it says cutaway. What we actually wanna change that to is picture and picture. And you'll notice right away it shrank it down. But we can just grab these little handles here and drag it up and we can move this wherever we want within the video screen here and now when we play so you notice it has that fade in that dissolve effect we can if we don't like that we can just set dissolve to zero and now we won't have that so this is helpful if you actually just create a standalone animation or effect and you want to move it somewhere else within the frame it doesn't actually have to be the perfect resolution. You can kind of move it around within in the, the video here. So uh, that's pretty much it. I actually like the, the original approach better. So let's change that back there. Okay, so once we have our video ready, we'll go up here to this share icon and tell it to share to a file. We'll call it breakdance, baby. And next, save, and now we just gotta wait for everything to render. And now, share was successful. So let's have a look. Here's the final result. Looks pretty good. This tutorial was a lot of fun to make, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what kind of tutorials you'd like to see next. Until then, thanks for watching.